Dear colleagues, in this video, we will try to understand a new indication of B octa. We have an idea that these devices are only for dilating the small people. But there are some situations like this cataract with pseudo exfoliation and extremely weak joinure. In this case, I have to do a lot of maneuvers, like I have to apply CTR and aspirate the cortex and a lot of things are to be done and better visibility is very important for such cases. So I am going to use a B octa in this case though the people is dilated to about 6.5 to 7 millimeter. The B octa will keep the dilate people dilated to about 8 millimeter and uh, the visibility will be much better in all the steps of the surgery. This is uh, uh, looking not good. This blood clot has gone with the B octa, but it comes out easily. And now see the tucking of B octa. There are holes in this. Just hold the hole and tuck this and the alternate flanges are above the iris. So, you have to tuck four times and four flanges will go under the iris, four uh, flanges with a hole at the middle and the other flanges, plain flanges will remain above the iris. And the people will take a beautiful octagonal shape. In such cases, we cannot use B hex because already the people is dilated to more than 6 millimeter. So, these are the cases when we need extremely, you know, uh, we need good visualization, very weak in genule. Anytime the uh, genule may get uh, torn and there can be uh, genuine adhesions at any time and you see the whole bag has is trying to come out as I try to do capsular excess. So, I need to do a large excess of about 5.5 millimeter and because the nucleus is also hard and it is done. And now, uh, viscoelastic substance is uh, is there and now see the people has taken beautiful octagonal shape and now what I am doing is I am doing hydro free dissection before applying a, a capsular tension ring. Why hydro free dissection with this iris spatula? It is because if I do hydro dissection the a cortex comes out and cortex gets, gets hydrated and visibility becomes poor. So, here goes the capsular tension ring, the leading end goes under the anticapsular rim, you know, gently push it and a Sinsky who goes through the side port ready to uh, tuck the trailing end under the anticapsular rim and here it goes. So, the bag is now supported and relieved to some extent that the bag will not easily come out. You know, I can, uh, I cannot be rough, but I can do manipulations with more courage, with more confidence. Now, I am doing the direct chop. The tip is buried in the substance of the nucleus. A good purchase is achieved and I try to do you know, division of the nucleus, but it was the crack was not good. So, I am holding at another place and trying to get another crack. Now, rotation is also uh, not quick in cases with weak genule. The capsulocortical adhesions are stronger. I have got a nice crack at this 
a, a place, rotate it about 90 degree and get another crack. I have got a free nuclear fragment, but I rotate and I want to get as many free pieces as possible. Get another crack and this is the endonucleus. I am trying, yes, I, I, I am removing the endonucleus at this time. And the free nuclear fragment also comes. The posterior capsule has to be taken care of very gently. In such cases, there is trampolining of the posterior capsule. The posterior capsule comes upward, goes backward frequently. So, we have to be very cautious about that. So, almost on heminucleus has been uh, removed. Now, we come to this heminucleus and the crack is not complete here. There is some attachment and I am finding it difficult. So, what I am doing is I am asking my assistant to inject visco. I stop irrigation, inject visco, keep the SC formed and then come out. Otherwise, what will happen? The antechamber will be shallow and there will be junular stress. The junior will, the bag will tend to come near cornea and the junior will be stressed. So, I form the antechamber with visco, then I come out, rotate the thing and now I, am, I have placed it in such a way that I can uh, manage it nicely. With two hooks, I break the bond between the two uh, pieces and now here goes the you no know, uh, this is another side port i'll need this for uh, cortical aspiration that's why i'm making it right now with visco inside and now this piece is emulsified Ultrasonic energy is set at 80 percent, but I am using whatever is necessary, sometimes 30 percent, sometimes 50 percent. And when I am emulsifying the hard nuclear piece, hard part, then it may reach at least about 60 to 70 percent. So, the cortex uh, epinucleus has been removed, epinuclear shell. This is the epinuclear shell on which was there in the upper part. It has to be, uh, when I am removing this, I am cautious, I am watching the movement of the posterior capsule. This is done. And now, inject visco immediately. And now is the time to remove the cortex. Uh, a Simco is a safe instrument in such cases, you get more control and you can mm, move it side to side gently and remove the cortex. In such cases, do not pull the cortex centrally. Hold the cortex and move side to side tangential pull and remove the cortex. So, removing the cortex from all around. It takes some time to remove the cortex when there is CTR in place, but the CTR has to be placed uh, in such cases in the early stage of the surgery to give support to the bag. Otherwise, during uh, you know emulsification of a piece, the genular dialysis can occur at any part of the capsular bag. Cortical cleanup is done, and now visco goes inside and an intraocular lens, a hydrophobic uh, single piece monofocal intraocular lens is placed in the capsular bag. The haptic is still not inside the bag, inject visco, go through the side port, press the haptic optic junction gently and then the haptic goes in the bag. Done. The IOL is in place. 
Now we have to remove the B octa. Before removing B octa, inject some more visco. Take the B hex forceps. Hold a uh, flange which is above the iris. Pull it centrally and then go again peripherally. And in this case, I find that the whole B octa is not the whole half of the B octa is in front of the iris. Go through the left side port and place the B octa in front of the iris. Now hold at any place and pull it out. Such a big device uh, keeps the people dilated to about 8 millimeter and can be removed so easily. This is a wonderful device. This case would have been difficult without this device. So this is an absolute indication of B octa where B hex will not work because the pupil is already dilated to about 7 millimeter and B octa is the thing that will help in cortical aspiration in uh, better visibility in such cases. In such cases, uh, a good option is to place a multi-piece lens in the sulcus and do optic capture and that gives more stability of the capsular bag. When the whole lens is in the bag, there is a chance that after uh, 5, 6 years or 10 years, the IOL bag complex can drop into the vitreous cavity. So there is an idea nowadays that you place a multi-piece lens in the sulcus and the optic do the optic capture though the posterior capsule is intact. We do this usually in posterior capsular rents but here the posterior capsular uh, rent is not there, posterior capsule is intact. Still we can do this, place the haptics in the sulcus of a multi-piece lens, sensor multi-piece is the best option. and. Uh, do optic capture. Now let us see some post-op pictures taken 72 hours after surgery. Cornea is clear, antechamber is quiet and uh, uh, patient is having unaided vision of 6 by 12. Uh, really a gratifying result. Thank you very much for your attention.